TUTCAST is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Enter coupon code TUT1 and save an additional 10% off your GoDaddy.com purchases. Hey there and welcome to part 2 of our Photoshop 101 series. In the last episode we discussed the workspace of Photoshop and now we're going to get into working with documents in Photoshop. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to do things like create new documents, open documents, save, import, export, print, and a lot, lot more. And I know this is very basic stuff and some of you may be more advanced than this. But stick with us, we're going to be getting to advanced materials. There are a lot of people who need to learn the basics. And this is a great starting point. So let's begin. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to create a new document, something you need to do in order to be able to start working in Photoshop. And like most programs to create something new, you would go up to the top, click on file and then click on new. You'll also notice there's a shortcut key, which is command N. If you're on a PC, it's control N. And we click on that. And here's our new document dialog box. Now there's a few things to take note of. The first thing at the top, you can name your document. I usually keep it untitled, but you can name it whatever you want. When you go to save your document, you'll have to name it anyway. Photoshop includes a bunch of presets that you can use. So if you're dealing with film and video, you can have a 16 by 9 document or a 4 by 3 document. You'll notice that you can choose the different sizes depending on what type of video format you're using. Or you can do a custom. You can choose the width and the height by pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, point, picas, or columns. You also have the resolution. Now a lot of people ask me, what's resolution? You'll also hear it known as DPI, dots per inch. Now if you're dealing with web-based graphics that's going to go on the internet, you want to keep it at 72 DPI or resolution. If you're dealing with print, I would say the minimum would be 200. Just so you have a nice sharp print, there's a lot more dots per inch and it prints out nice and sharp. If it's 72 and you're trying to print it, chances are it's going to come out blurry. Next is color mode. You should only pay attention to this if you really know what you're talking about. CMYK is typically used for print. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you want to use RGB. Usually keep these fine. The background content, you can start it at white, you can start it at the background color, which is down here at the bottom, or you can start it as transparent. Obviously, when we're working with the layers, you can change the background color to whatever you please. There's also a few advanced options. Um, these I'll go into further down the line. We're working with color profiles to match colors with your monitor, and so on and so forth, and of course, pixel ratios. So we're going to create a very simple document with 500 by 500. Again, if you're dealing with print, you should probably use inches and a bigger resolution. And we're going to click on OK. And here is our brand new document in Photoshop. Now we're going to look at opening files in Photoshop. And to open files like most programs, you go to File, Open, just like this. And here is your open folder dialog box, whatever you want to call it. Now, depending on the operating system that you're on, it may look a little bit different if you're on a Mac or a PC or even Linux. But the great thing about opening documents in Photoshop is there are a lot of documents that Photoshop supports. Look at all these. You can open 3D Studio Max documents. Now obviously depending on the version of Photoshop, some versions don't um, handle 3D that well or at all. You can also open and edit PDFs, um, obviously the standard JPEG and GIF files. You can open film strips. You can open video files to edit video, which we'll be discussing down the line. There are a lot of things that you can open in Photoshop that a lot of people don't know about. And of course, if you want to open a document, you can either double click on it or click on it once and open it just like this. So very basic stuff. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is saving our documents. Saving is, again, typical in most programs. Except in Photoshop, we have another option called Save for Web and Devices. Now, if you're working with web graphics and you want to optimize your document and image as much as possible to get a nice small file size or to work with the colors a little bit, you want to choose Save for Web and Devices. So if we click on this, we are presented with our Save for Web and Devices dialog box where we're able to optimize our image as much as possible. At the right hand side, we can choose some presets to help optimize very quickly, or we can customize it right below. We have the option to choose from GIF, JPEG, 
PNG or WBMP, whatever that is, I don't know. Um, if you're dealing with transparency, chances are you want to go with PNG24. It, it saves transparency really nicely. Otherwise, go with either JPEG or GIF. I find that transparency using GIFs, eh, it's not that great. So, here we have the option to optimize our image. We can down the quality a little bit. And you'll notice at the very bottom left-hand corner, we have our size, the file size. In this case, it's 18 kilobytes. So, if we decrease the, opa the opacity, if we decrease the quant quality, quantity, quality, I don't know. If we decrease the quality, you'll notice that the file size decreases as well. And the quality of the image, depending on how many colors you have, doesn't decrease that much. So it's usually good to decrease the quality just a little bit. You can add some blur. You can also add a matte, which doesn't make a difference if you're not dealing with transparency. You can also select whether it's low, medium, or high. Obviously, maximum is 100% quality low is 10% and obviously you have your preview right here. Now if you're dealing with web layouts, um, you may want to look at the slices tool and we're going to deal with all this later on. And also, obviously once you're ready to save it, click on save and you're given the option to save your file wherever you want. At the bottom here, this is pretty much only relevant to people who are dealing with web layouts, which we're going to get into later on. We can choose to save them as images only HTML and images or just HTML. Now obviously you have to have your web layout sliced up. Again, that's further down the line. So we're going to cancel that and we're going to head into importing and exporting. I'm going to very quickly touch on this. Now the only thing you should really take note of right now, and we'll get into more things later on, is video frames to layers. Basically you can import videos into Photoshop, take the frames and create layers from them. Very simple stuff. Um, the export feature, if we're working with paths in Photoshop and you want to really get into vector work and you want to in export it to Illustrator, you can do so right here. You can send video preview to a device. You can check a video preview if you're working with video. You can also render your video. Uh, you can save it as a MOV file, an AVI, and again, all this stuff we're going to get into later on. We also have the option to print our documents. Printing is very standard in most programs. You get a preview. You can choose what printer. You can choose color management. All that fun stuff. Very basic. I'm sure if you use Microsoft Word, you know how to print documents. And the last few things I want to touch on is resizing your documents. Now let me open a document here. I'm going to open this right here. There are two ways to resize a document in Photoshop. If we go up to image we have two options. We can resize the whole image or we can resize the canvas. Let's focus on resizing the image for now. So we're going to click on that and we're given our resize dialog box. Now, if we have constrained proportions checked on, it's going to resize both the width and the height equally. So if we want to double it from 500 to 1000, you'll notice that the height whoops, doubles as well. And we can resize it pixels or percentage as well down here, inches, centimeters, and so on and so forth. We can also resize the resolution, which isn't smart unless you're dealing with vector or you're resizing downwards. Obviously, if you uncheck constrained proportions, you can resize to whatever you want and it will not resize the other dimension. Now, this was 500 by 90, I believe. Now, let me show you the difference between resizing an image and resizing your canvas. Let's say on this image here, I wanted more space on the right hand side to work with. If I resize my image width wise, let's say I want to make it 700 and click OK, you'll notice that the whole image gets stretched out. It's very difficult to work with. Where if we go to image canvas size, we're actually able to add to our document. So if I want to resize it on the right, I'm going to click on the left arrow, this one right here. Enter the new size of the width of the document, so 700, click OK, and you'll notice it hasn't stretched out our image, it's only added to the image. So we can go ahead and actually create a new layer and fill that with black to continue working in that portion of the document. And we can go back and we can resize it any way we want. We can resize the whole thing all around the borders, or we can resize individual sections.
So if I want to add to the bottom, I would click on the top arrow and increase the height. Click OK. And as you notice, it didn't affect the actual image, it just added to the document. So I hope you learned something from this tutorial going over documents in Photoshop. Again, this is very basic stuff. I'm just trying to get new people who are trying to learn Photoshop familiar with Photoshop so that when we do get into advanced material, they know exactly what we're working with. So stay tuned for our next tutorial where we're going to be continuing with our Photoshop 101 series and hopefully get into more advanced material very shortly. So this has been Howard from IceFlow Studios. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And until next time, take care.